today. Uh, for those of you not sure if I had actually expressed it on uh, any of my previous uh, Bible studies, but uh, did take a little bit of a dive on, yeah, a complicated trail, but um, definitely one that um, I commonly go over with absolutely no problem and uh, had different lenses in my glasses and caught a little glimpse of the sun and uh, overshot the turn. Next thing, tires sliding down the riverbank, hits a 10 inch log, um, happens so quickly before you know it. Um, I think, well, let's see, this side, all right. A um, little bit of a bruise there, but you can see on the arm. Uh, definitely ate a boulder, so. My neck is extremely sore. Been moving really kind of slow today. Taking it kind of easy. Um, but uh, today's study is uh, called Gentle as a Dove, Cautious as a Snake. And it comes from uh, the book of Matthew, chapter 10. Um, and while I will be reading verses 16 through, I believe, 20 five or six um, to give context to what Jesus was really um, saying to the disciples at that time um, and I will be using the NIV translation the title really comes from uh, Matthew 10 16 um, so beginning with 1016 I am sending you out like sheep among wolves therefore be as shrewd as snakes and as innocent as doves be on your guard you will be handed over to the local councils and be flogged in the synagogues on my account you will be brought before governors and kings as witnesses to them and to the Gentiles but when they arrest you, do not worry about what they say. Um, at that time, you will be given what to say. Um, for it will be you speaking, but the spirit of your father speaking through you. Brother will betray brother to death and father his child. Children will rebel against their parents and have them put to death. You will be hated by everyone because of me, but the one who stands firm to the end will be saved. When you are persecuted in one place, flee to another. Try, truly, I tell you, you will not finish going through the town of Israel before the Son of Man comes. The student is not above the teacher, nor a servant above his master. It is not, it is enough for the student to be like their teachers and servants to be like their masters. If the head of the house has been called, this is a hard word, Beelzebul but how much the members of this household. So, what does this all mean? <laughs> well, Jesus comes right out of the gate um, saying this in verse 16. Look, I'm sending you out like sheep among wolves. That doesn't start off very good. Um, you know, if you were on your new job, um, starting today and the first things out of your boss were well I'm sending you out like a sheep among wolves uh, you'd probably start to wonder 
did you possibly take the wrong job? Um, or is this guy just kind of like a practical joker, has kind of a weird sense of humor? Um, but he was serious, so that should get your attention, um, should it not? Um, you, you know, you talk about danger, sheep among wolves, that's dangerous. Um, what, what is a sheep? How does a sheep, you know, in the natural stand a chance against a wolf, especially a pack of wolves? So, you know, Jesus said, I am sending you out into danger. He's telling his apostles to expect danger. He's warning them. Um, he says in the second part of verse 16, therefore, be as shrewd as a serpent. And as innocent as a dove. Um, different translations use different words. That which I just quoted you is from, I believe, the NIV. Um, on the screen, I have the Good News translation. Um, and it says, listen, I am sending you out just like sheep to a pack of wolves. Um, you must be cautious as snakes and as gentle as doves. So more or less the same context. Well, actually the same context, just different words. So we should, what does this mean? We should be shrewd or, shrewd or wise as serpents in that serpent, a serpent is able to keep itself safe, um, is able to escape, slither away, and able to avoid danger. Um, so Jesus is warning us to be like a snake, um, quick and nimble to slide away from danger, um, keep, you know, keep itself safe, um, and keep itself out of harm's way. We should also be innocent as a dove in that we don't want to give any reason to bring on persecution or accusation. So bottom line here is we don't want to give anybody a reason to persecute us as a Christian. Um, on this point, commentator Kurt A. Richardson says, we more often invert the two, proving to be as guilty as serpents and as stupid as doves. Now, that's from the New American Commentary. Um, so let me rephrase that, or not rephrase that, let me restate that again. And that was by commentator Kurt A. Richardson, who says that in what Jesus is telling us, we typically do the opposite. We invert the two, proving to be as guilty as serpents and as stupid as doves. So, you know, don't do that. Um, don't give any extra reason for people to show hatred towards you, and we're all guilty of it. Jesus was basically saying that things will be hard enough if you don't go looking for trouble or give other reasons um, to make it harder. So be wise and innocent. So be prepared to escape the danger that comes after you, but also be gentle like a dove. Like, you know, when you just read the scripture, um, someone might turn around and perceive that that means be gentle as a dove. Like, you know, you're supposed to just be so passive and so forth. But really, this is a tactic and a strategy for avoiding persecution, though it's going to come. Um, but for avoiding it um, and slithering away from it and making sure that you don't provoke it, though it in, by no means is the chapter telling us that we are to walk around with our tails between our legs and not preach the gospel as you know as you'll see as we go through um 
So then Jesus goes on into detail about what types of dangers uh, the apostles may face. And these are the same types of dangers, you know, in some context that are still faced by disciples of Christ in certain areas of the world, even though in the U.S. we may not um, have our lives threatened typically though in our current state um, I can't say that that is not necessarily true um, we definitely you know in the world still have persecution where people are killed martyred um, for preaching the good news so looking at verses 17 and 18 17 reads beware of them because they will hand you over to the local courts and flog you in their synagogues. Um, you will even be brought before governors and kings because of me to bear witness to them, to the Gentiles. So we see different levels of persecution, which Jesus foretells the apostles, um, his followers, and, and that same message goes out to us. We see it from the Jews, Jesus says, in local courts courts and synagogues they will face persecution we also see it from the Roman government back then and um, you know Jesus says that they will be brought before governors and kings Gentiles in order to be persecuted um, maybe it's not Romans that we're being brought in front of in today's world it could just be our friends and family on on facebook it could be if we're in a foreign country it could be um government um military uh just about anything um amazingly jesus says that one of the effects of this persecution is that the apostles um will be able to bear witness about jesus to others, including the Gentiles, um, even in spite of this persecution. So obviously, you know, that in itself is a miraculous thing because as you're looking at the beginning part, you're kind of wondering like, you know, if you're like me, you're like, well, so then w what are we gonna do? Um, you know, if we're, constantly slithering away and we're constantly avoiding any kind of conflict um, because we're going to be brought before all these people and persecuted um, you know what is it good that we're going to be able to bring how are we going to be able to go ye into the world and preach the good news um, so that brings me to um, verses 19 and 20 and just as a refresher 19 but when they hand you over don't worry about how or what you are to speak for you will be given what to say at that hour because it isn't you speaking but the spirit of your father is speaking through you um, that is fantastic. Jesus is telling his followers ahead of time that danger will come. Rejection will come. Harm will come. Uh, a time will come for you to have to give a defense. And when you do so, you will be witnessing for him. Um, so, you know, as I said earlier, it kind of looked like well, how are we going to do that? But he is saying by the power of the Holy Spirit, even though we are put into these situations where we are persecuted um, and we're kind of dumbfounded and lost at, you know, at words. I mean, we may be fearful. We may be, you know, hurt, punished, whatever, tormented. Um the Holy Spirit will come upon us and give us the words to speak so that the ultimate mission of Jesus' um, resurrection and lordship can be preached, but it will be God speaking through us 
rather than us. Um, so Jesus provides us with this supernatural, miraculous solution to the problem that the disciples had, that we have just even in day-to-day -day life when we're not in the extreme situations that they were or people are in third world countries um, who are on missions and, and so forth. Um, you know, I even, I, I sponsor a child in a country where I have to be careful just for her sake what I write in the letters just because things are monitored so closely and they just, you know, they allow the organization in there to help the children. But I can't just flat out say the word of Jesus. Um, or quite frankly, I could get her, her and her family killed. Um, so, you know, at those times that I write those letters, I have to rely on the inspired word of God to speak truth in a way that does not bring harm to her. Um, so, sorry, I got a little bit off, off track here, so I got to figure out where I was in my prepared notes, and I always wonder why. Well, I know why I prepare notes, but maybe I ought to um, find a better technique. Um, over time, I'm sure that I'll get better at this uh, than, than I have been. I think I'm umming a little less these days. So in that moment of persecution, in that moment of danger, God will speak through us. And that's an amazing thing that should bring some level of comfort, knowing that God living within us through the Holy Spirit will come to our rescue and will speak for us when we are unable to speak. We can expect help from the Holy Spirit. We have that assurance and we need to learn to listen closely and answer slowly or we are likely to put as I do at times, our foot in our mouth and be swallowed up by our attackers. As I mentioned, I know um, I can often um, be guilty of. Um, you know, I never said I was perfect. I just said I was a Christian. Um, so keep in mind again that this passage is speaking specifically about the moment of pressure and persecution, which may naturally lead us um, being unable to speak boldly, let alone speak at all. Uh, Jesus says that the Spirit of God will be with us and will guide us supernaturally. So the same Spirit that descended upon Jesus, like a dove when he was being baptized, will be there to guide us and in the midst of our persecution. He dwells within us. So we will indeed desperately need God in moments like these. And the apostles, um, as well as us, would surely need God's spirit because Jesus says things will get even worse um, as time goes on. So we need the Holy Spirit and the leading of the Holy Spirit more now than ever. Now, as we approach the final verses, we are told we will face persecution. And in case there is any confusion as to the degree, the degree to which people may hate followers of God, um, Jesus says that Christians will even be hated and delivered to death by their own family members. Now, maybe here in the United States, um, our own family members are not going to even be in a position to deliver us to death, but it can blink, bring complete division between our family members over Christ. Um, and as you know, I did a study not too long ago on um, the worldly expression of blood is thicker than water versus the biblical um, 
description or definition of blood is thicker than water. And quite frankly, um, this, as you know, he states here, um, you know, through his word that we may be handed over by brothers and sisters, um, we may need to, um, for the sake of Christ, we may need to rebuke and or distance ourselves away from those that if society had permitted are acting in a manner that would um, cause them to bring harm against us. So that is again being cautious as a snake and squirming away and getting away even from our own family members. He then adds that you will be hated by everyone. Um, now, I don't think that that is necessarily means everyone as in Christians, though, believe it or not, there are different levels of Christians. There's your Sunday Christian, um, who really doesn't live the word during the course of the week. Um, you may be hated by them. Um, that, that is, you will be hated by, you know, all types of people. Uh, your countrymen, the government, um, your brothers and sisters in Christ, quite possibly, um, even your own family members. Uh, this is shocking and sobering reality, um, but we must deal with this. Some people are so bent against the cause of Christ that they will hate and even kill those who follow him. Now, again, we do not necessarily live in a country where that occurs all that often, though it has occurred um, in many of our school shootings um, and in many of our situations going on today. It is actually an attack against a godly world. Um, so people are either directly or indirectly being persecuted because of Christ. Um, because they stand for ideals that are biblical in nature. So this was the reality in those days of Jesus, and it is reality and part of the world today. And it may very well be the reality for those of us um, listening to this message right now. I know in some respects it is for me. Uh, Jesus offers us, though, you know, he never, never ends a story with bad news. Um, Jesus offers us a bit of comfort here on this idea of this intense hatred that we will go through um, and that we will endure, saying that because we endured it, we will be saved. So we may, you know, very well suffer on this earth as followers of Jesus Christ. However, that will only last because life is short. Physical life here on this side of heaven is short. Um, so we will only suffer for a short while and then we will be saved to eternal glory, um, which will never end. And we will live and dwell in the house of the Lord, in the presence of our Savior, in the presence of our God, um, for eternity. So there is the good news. Um, I hope this sheds a little bit of light on um, Matthew 10 um, and verses 16 through 25, but also because I had posted um, this image as part of my story for Matthew 10, 16, it gives a further explanation, the context of what is meant by listen, I am sending you um, out like sheep to a pack of wolves, um, but be cautious um, like a snake, but gentle as a dove, which I could very easily see certain people twisting that into their favor to use it to win an argument when 
we do happen to be led by the Spirit of God and speak boldly. All right, I hope that um, study was worthwhile. Um, I hope that you got some value out of that. Um, again, I always look forward to um, comments, which quite frankly, I don't get a lot of, but I'm happy I get a lot of views. Um, so at least you're listening to the messages and the membership is growing, but refer this out to your friends, Reflections of a Savior. Um, I also do publish some up on Instagram if they're not too long because um, they do have 15 minute um, video time limits. So usually I have to break up a typical video into two to three parts um, and make it a series and uh, when it gets over two or three parts it's usually a little bit difficult um, to do that and keep the flow going together so that I'm getting people consistently watching the thorough message and definitely do not want to be one that has somebody read something or listen to something in context or out of context because they don't finish through with the whole thing. Now, I know I'm not responsible for people, but when I can avoid causing the least of these to stumble, um, I try to be cautious in that area because the Bible advises me to. So again, love you. Have a great day. Hope this message meant something to you. And hopefully I'll be able to turn my neck further than that without it hurting in a couple days um definitely going biking riding today unless it starts to rain which i actually haven't looked at the forecast um but it looks out good today so hopefully that will loosen some things up a little bit um and uh just as a warning because i get sloppy sometimes too and i have helmets all the way from 30 dollar regular traditional mountain biking helmets to full face helmets for when I'm really riding extreme on rock. Um, I know sometimes we don't feel like wearing them because they mess up our hair. It gets hot. They don't look so good. Um, but neither does a cast around your head um, or big scars and so forth. And, you know, you can see I had on proper riding gear and I still got hurt. Um, so be safe. Um, Enjoy yourself, enjoy the outdoors, and I look forward to talking to you tomorrow. Love you all, praying for you, and uh, have a blessed day.